Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kadrowski and this organic chemistry video discusses how E1 and SN1 reactions occur together and compete with each other. The E1 and SN1 reaction mechanisms occur together and compete with each other. The reason is that they both share the same carbocation intermediate. Therefore, E1 and SN1 usually occur together in the same reaction pot. Here's an example with a tertiary alkyl bromide. This alkyl bromide has an alpha position, which has the leaving group, and a beta position, which has protons that could be abstracted. E1 and SN1 mechanisms both go through the same first step, which is formation of the carbocation intermediate. Once the carbocation intermediate is formed, however, it can do a couple of different things. It might get deprotonated by a weak base, in this case water. Deprotonation in the beta position would give an alkene product, which has a double bond between the alpha and beta carbons, as well as a conjugate acid and the leaving group. The other possibility, though, is that the water could function as a weak nucleophile and instead of deprotonating could attack the carbocation, which would look like this. And in that case, we'd get a new bond between the oxygen and the carbocation carbon and this substitution product, which is shown here. As is common with SN1 mechanisms, there'd be a subsequent deprotonation step where the initially formed substitution product would get deprotonated to give a neutral alcohol species and a conjugate acid and the leaving group. These are the two organic products of the overall reaction. There's an elimination product and there's a substitution product. Since they share a carbocation intermediate, it's really not possible to control which one of these is formed preferentially. Both form at the same time. Here's another example. Predict the elimination and substitution products of the following reaction. In this case, we're going to start with a secondary alkyl chloride, 2-chlorobutane, and we're going to have methanol be our second reactant. This is a secondary alkyl halide, and methanol is a weak base. Since it's a weak base, we know we're not going to get an E2 reaction because E2 reactions require a strong base. This is also a weak nucleophile, and since it's a weak nucleophile, we won't get an SN2 reaction because SN2 reactions require a strong nucleophile. Therefore, what's left for possibilities are E1 and SN1. Since this is a secondary alkyl halide, carbocation intermediates are certainly possible, so that's what happens in the first step. The leaving group leaves, and a carbocation intermediate forms. Once the carbocation forms, it could either react with a base or it could react with a nucleophile. If methanol functions as a weak base, deprotonates the beta position. If methanol functions as a weak base and deprotonates on the left side, the following monosubstituted alkene is produced. If the base were to deprotonate the secondary position here, we would get a transalkene. But there's another stereochemical possibility, a stereoisomer that forms that's the cis version where the weak base deprotonates that same position. Now you might wonder, how does that form from this carbocation? This is a question a lot of students have. Well, remember, you can rotate about single bonds, and that gives this different conformation for the carbocation. And from this species, deprotonation could give the cis alkene. If the methanol were to deprotonate the carbocation in this conformation, that would lead to the stereoisomer, the cis alkene. When a reaction undergoes an E1 mechanism, you have to consider all possible stereoisomers as products, not just the one that comes from the carbocation as it's drawn. The other product of the E1 mechanism is this conjugate acid product and the leaving group. Now the other possibility for the carbocation though is methanol might act as a weak nucleophile and attack the carbocation. And if that happens, if methanol were to attack the carbocation carbon, it could do so from either the top face or the bottom face. That's going to produce a new stereogenic center and there are two possible products. The product with the nucleophile being delivered from the top face and the product where the nucleophile was delivered from the bottom face with a dashed bond. And then in a subsequent deprotonation step, those two intermediates would be deprotonated to give neutral ethers in this case. This is a fairly complicated reaction. It looks like a fairly simple alkyl halide, and it is. It's a simple secondary alkyl halide, but the product scope is pretty complicated, and you really have to think about all the different possibilities. In this case, there are three elimination products, including two stereoisomers, and two substitution products, which are stereoisomers. This is a pair of enantiomers in this case. Really, the best thing to do is to draw out the carbocation and think about all possibilities. What would happen if it got deprotonated by the weak base? What are all the alkenes that could get produced? What would happen if it gets attacked by a weak nucleophile? And what are the possible substitution products, including stereoisomers? If you found this video useful, check out the next one in the series or watch the prior video. And consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. My name is Brant Kudrowski. Thanks for watching.